What's up guys, Justin Russell. Josh Schneider. Here on another beautiful, windy Kansas day. It's only supposed to gust to like 45 or 50 yeah, today. Yeah, it's not so too awesome. bad. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> so, sighting stuff. We're out here filming with the Garmin LiveScope LBS34 versus the Lowrance Active Target. So. Yeah. So far on the water, man, uh, close. Uh, it's pretty darn close. We're going to go back to the studio and yeah, check some stuff out Yeah, it's easier to see but... it the side by side for sure. But just from our eyes here, man, um, not as a much of a difference as I really thought there would be. Truth be told, it's really, really close. So we'll see again when it does in the studio. We get back in there, do a breakdown and stuff like that. So be sure to stay tuned. Check it out. All right, guys, we're back in the studio here. Going to put these images side by side and go through them like we've done in other videos. So we've got Active Target on the left side of your screen with the LVS34 Garmin Live Scope on the right. And first off, we're starting with perspective mode versus their scout mode. Yes, sir. Let's get her going. All right. Here's our fence row here. Now, as you guys have seen in the video in the past, we'll put the link in the description. We know the active target is not going to be as good in the shallow water application and it's scout mode versus perspective mode. We've seen this before. We've kind of gone over the science behind it and the engineering behind it with the different angles and stuff. So this is what we've seen before. We knew going into this, Garmin was absolutely going to knock this out of the park on perspective mode versus our scout mode. This is nothing new that we've no. seen before. So Yeah, it looks excellent. I mean, the what we've talked about, the engineering of it, the steep angle, that's why the active target looks um, pretty solid at 20 feet out. It's just because it's aimed there. Correct. Uh, it's, it's sharper down. Um, the LVS34 looks fantastic. Where it's we've crazy. seen the opposite occur is where active target shines in that perspective and scout mode in like that what 50 foot range like that 25 mm -hmm. to 50 when we did it on the spillway mm -hmm. what we've done for it was really really impressive actually really really impressive yeah. so no that looked fantastic um difference you can see different things on it but it really does you know you can tell the depth ranges they're yeah, set yeah. for yeah all right now we're headed to mid-range depth i'm um, looking at some of the anchors and brush, brush piles, piles. So, um, we're in a little bit closer on the LVS 34. Both still have really good definition. Uh, I'm still going to say target separation is a little bit better on the LVS 34 here. Mm -hmm. um, but we're still seeing lots of little tree branches and we're seeing the, the cables coming over on this again. Mm -hmm. um, One thing, like if we're nitpicking differences here, you can see where the dimension on the 34 towards the top of the brush pile, it's like it's coming back towards you. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing as that curve continues, and it really gives you this idea of the three-dimensional space underwater. The active target, you can see it, but it does cut off and kind of black out a little sooner. Sure. But on the top of the brush pile, great definition. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, solid, really solid. The anchor anchors, blocks. Yeah, anchors look great on both. Mm -hmm. Again, I view that the, I feel that the LVS 34 is a little bit hotter. Again, like, Mm -hmm. Gains turned up, so on the Lowrance side, we'd be saying the contrast is turned up, the brightness, it looks brighter, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, it looks brighter, yeah. Can see a little more features out of it. All right, into the deeper water, still in forward mode. Um, let's check out the spillway. Um, right off the bat, buoy lines. We're seeing the buoy lines on the active target going all the way to the bottom, like fully connected, where we saw a little bit of the gaps on the LVS 34. Uh, man, this one's a little bit tougher, I kind of feel like. Yeah. We're still seeing the tree on the buoy lines, seeing the buoy lines literally almost continuously all the way down. I'm wondering if you, the buoy lines, they do look fantastic. And you actually... In that you kind of right lose there, you, it. Yeah, you lose it towards the bottom. Maybe seeing the range here, because if you're looking at the screen, the... We're slightly, slightly closer. Slightly closer on the active target. Um and I'm seeing a little bit, but it, that hotter, higher gain, yeah. you're getting clearer picture um, on that. And when you see on the active target here, it's got great clarity um, with these shadows. I don't know how else to describe those. You can tell when it's within its its beam or, sure. or where it's focused. Um, it looks really good. It's just 
the LBS 34 is painting a broader picture at the further distance. But clearer. that's because the beam's also wider too. Yeah, so we're dealing sure. with a 18 degree cone versus a 20 degree cone on the LBS 34. So we're going to be seeing more information on the LVS-34 mm -hmm. because of that. So yeah. we don't have a way of dialing that or making those even. That's just the way the products were engineered and designed. Yeah. Um, man, I'm still going to say there's a slight edge to the LVS-34. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel it's a little hotter, a little more crisp, a little bit brighter, um, especially in that mid-depth range at like 15 to 25. Yeah. But the active target is not lacking very much behind this. I'm still going to say if you're a Lawrence guy, get you an active target and you're going to be absolutely fantastic. If you're a Garmin guy and don't have a live scope yet, get you an LVS 34. It's it's going to be fantastic. Um, both are, we've seen in other videos that we've done in the past with other people and ourselves, both are extremely fishable. Yeah. Um, both are, you can be very, very successful with either one of them, man. Um, well, I, you know, I know we're doing active target versus 34 here, but bring into the 32 a little bit. So kind of a throwback to some of the comparisons where we see the active target and the 32 were really, really like close. Active target may edge to here, LBS 32 edge to here. And it was similar when you compare the 32 to the 34. Mm -hmm. It's that like margin of difference that you see that it, it doesn't blow it out of the water, but it's noticeably clearer. Yeah, is, uh, absolutely. I, I guess the easiest way I could put that. The simplest way I can describe it is if you're a Lowrance guy, I don't see a need to sell your Lowrance and Active Target and go LVS 34. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like what we also said to people when we compared the LVS 32 to Active Target, I don't see a need to sell your Garmin unit and LVS 32 to go to Active Target. Mm -hmm. Like you already hinted at and, and said, it's not this holy cow, I have to have it. That's such this bigger thing. It's really not that big of a difference. Mm -hmm. Not in my mind to justify selling one versus the other. This is a, a case in point of if you don't have either of these two systems, which one would you go with mm -hmm. and why? Yeah. You know, That's if true. you're not tied to a brand specifically, like if you're a Lowrance guy, I would go with Active Target. If you're a Garmin guy, I would go with Garmin. If you're a Humminbird guy, figure out which operating system you prefer of the two units and you'll be happy with either one. Mm -hmm. um, just keep in mind knowing that there are some engineering differences between the two with cone angles and angles in perspective and scout mode that are not the same, no. you know? Yeah. No, out of the box, they are different animals. Um, they both have their advantages, but... Yeah, I mean, you said it best. That it's a it's a nice world we live in right now, where um, Swiss Army boats don't have to exist anymore. Yeah, you, you can run your brand, be comfortable with the electronics you're running as a full system, as opposed to kind of patching in one piece specifically for one tool. Um, at least with Garmin Lowrance, for sure, right now we're seeing fully capable full boat setups from stem to stern, to yeah. trolling motor, you name it. Um, they're both putting out uh, a nice system for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, be sure to check out some of our other comparison videos that we have. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.